Yeah, I agree with you. The only problem I have with it is just the the perception that it creates. You know, McGregor Correct. has been in the headlines a lot. Uh, you know, the big fight against Floyd Mayweather, a potential fight, a fight that if it does happen, if it were to happen, Las Vegas would obviously want it. It would want the financials tied to it. And so to make it look as if you're going back and, and that's affecting your decision is not always a great look for a regulatory body. But I will say that that. The, at the end of the day, I'm okay with it because it was ridiculous. It was it was seventy five thousand dollar fine for throwing water bottles back and forth at one another. I just didn't think that 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 ever that punishment ever fit the crime. And as you know, uh, Kevin and the listeners should know as well. The, the the commission has changed a little bit. It's it's exchanged out a couple members. I think they're now all sort of on the same page. Whereas before they were sort of fighting one another uh, on a regular basis. It seemed like when these cases came up. Now it seems like they're of of the same mindset. They're not out to try to really get these guys and punish them in a, in a, in a really you know way that uh, a public way. They just want to make sure that they're doing their job as a regulatory body. So I'm I'm on board, even though you know from a procession standpoint, it maybe doesn't look so great. Stick, sticking with this McGregor. Uh, topic. He was in the headlines, of course, uh, because of what he did in New York. He walked out. Uh, I was there. He walked out an Irish buddy of his, Michael Conlon, who was making his professional boxing debut at Madison Square Garden. Michael Conlon, he won his debut, but it was McGregor who was in the headlines. I'll just let you take this and run with it, Kevin. Talk to us about uh, what happened that night. Well, I, I think, first of all, Brett, what was really interesting was when uh, Top Rank, which was promoting that show, and Top Rank, for people who don't follow boxing, is uh, arguably the number one boxing promoter in the United States, maybe in the game period. Uh, they announced that Conor McGregor was going to walk Michael Conlon to the cave, uh, to the ring. And what I thought was really interesting was the reaction of all the other boxing writers. There were three or four uh, guys uh, of us there that cover both. Uh, myself, Lance Buckmeyer from the L.A. Times. George Willis uh, was there, and of course, Tom Zabesi, who writes for UFC.com, and also boxing scene, he was there. Um, but the, the other guys were all, where's Connor? Where's Connor? And they were all, they all were aware of him, and they all were looking to talk to him. And when he came out, he was standing outside the ring, and they brought him over to the media section during the fight. And they wanted him to sit right in front of me. They put a chair, uh, I was in the first row. And they put a chair right against the table in front of me, and he didn't want to sit. He wanted to stand up, so he actually wasn't there. But he was coaching all the time, and I saw all the reporters taking photos of McGregor as he was yelling to uh, Michael Conlon in the ring. And then what happened afterwards, uh, Bob Arum was down talking to a bunch of us. This was in the theater at the Garden. Just so people who don't know the venue know, it's like down in the, kind of in the basement of Madison Square Garden. It seats about 5,000. And we were in front of the stage, and there's not a lot of room right there. So they can't hold a press conference or anything. So usually the fighters and the promoters, they come over to the reporters at ringside and just answer any questions we have. So Bob Arum was doing that. And I saw off to my right side, uh, ring left, my right. Uh, I saw Conor McGregor talking to one of the publicists of the show, and he asked, "Where are the boxing guys?" And I had talked to Conor earlier in the night, shook his hand, you know, just made small talk, "How you doing?" Blah blah blah, uh, but nothing uh, too uh, too lengthy. So he said, "Where are the boxing guys?" And they pointed over toward us. So Connor, as Bob is talking, comes storming over, and literally there's a crowd of people swarmed around Bob. Connor bursts into that, and he, he hits Bob Arum, who is 85 years old, and Bob kind of got pushed back, and you know, it was a minute you could tell he was surprised, and then Connor gets in the face of uh, your colleague, Dan Raphael, and he said, are you the boxing guy? And, and Dan gets a big smile on his face and says, yes, I'm the boxing guy, and then Connor leans in, and he goes, I am boxing, and he sticks his finger in Dan's face, and then he starts this rant about how I know everybody – thinks I'm going to get beat, and I'm, but I'm going to win the fight, and I guarantee you that I'm going to beat uh, Floyd Mayweather. And, you know, the typical things that you and I have heard at any Conor McGregor uh, media session that we've had with him, and he's young, he's in great shape, he's changing the sport, and then he said, I am boxing. And as he's looking at Dan, another reporter, uh, and I couldn't see who it was, but it was off to the side, he said, when is uh, the fight going to happen? And McGregor, without – changing his glaze from Dan. He says, it's going to happen in a couple of months. We're working on it. We're very close. And then he goes, I'm out of here. And then he just storms off. And it was just, it was great theater to see it happen and uh, and to see my colleagues in the boxing industry kind of not know what to make of it. They haven't had a character like that around uh, 
boxing in a while. So to uh, for them to uh, see it and kind of react the way they did was kind of funny. Yeah, I, I would have been great to be there. I've obviously watched the videos. Connor at his best, man. I mean, he's delivering a performance there. And, you know, we always say that, that, that Connor is delivering a performance. He's doing this for the cameras. He's doing it with a purpose. He always says that I mean every word of it, though. You know, you guys can, can say that it's fight promotion. You can say it's this or that. But I mean every single word of it. Um, do you believe that Connor McGregor thinks he's going to win this fight if it does happen? What do, you, what do you think deep down, knowing Connor as you do, as we both do, been, been around the guy, does he think he's going to win, honestly? I think, I think Connor is a smart guy, right? And I think he understands that. He, the odds are against him, but that he has a chance. And as long as he feels like he has a chance, then then why not do it? So I, I think if Floyd Mayweather was 28 years old like he is, uh, Conor McGregor would not be calling him out because, you know, hey, look, you know, Floyd Mayweather, the great boxer that he is, in his life, you know, you would, there would be zero chance. You know, if there is a chance, and, you know, I want to be clear, I think Mayweather is, you know, a favorite to win this fight. I don't want to be sitting here with anybody with the impression that I think Connor is. But if there was a chance that, you know, for McGregor to win, it would be the situation that we're in now, where Floyd Mayweather is 40 years old. He hasn't fought since September of 2015. If they fight this September, which looks like would be most likely, there'd be two years that he's off. Um, you've got a young guy that's aggressive that has nothing to lose, right? Because Connor is going to make a career high payday off of this. And so, what does he have to lose? So if he just charges in and starts firing punches, you know, that's his best chance. I don't see him hitting Mayweather, but certainly, um, you know, stranger things have happened and time catches up to fighters and sometimes their reflexes aren't the same and all it takes is one punch. And so if he lands that one punch, so I don't think he thinks he's going to win the fight, but I do think he has a shot because of his punching power and he's willing to roll the dice and take that chance. And I, you know, even though I don't like the fight, I applaud him for being willing to do something and, and take risks. Well, we got to move on to the second headline, but real quickly, I do want to get your take. Do you think the fight happens this year? And what kind of take are you getting from the UFC? Because that was always the big hurdle to clear in this potential matchup is how is the UFC involved? You know, what do they get out of it? Are they willing to put their star at risk? How much money do they get out of it? All of that. Um, what kind of insight do you have on that? And, and again, at the end of the day, do you think the fight happens this year? I, I still think it does not happen this year. I think it's less likely. I think it's close, you know, but I think it's less likely. Uh, I've talked to people, high up people on both sides, and, you know, there's a huge amount of hurdles. And to even get it in September, six months from now, that's going to be a lot of work, I think. So I would yeah. say this year, unlikely. Um, you know, in terms of from the UFC standpoint, I mean, they're really in a rock and hard place because if they if they say no and they and they put their foot down and don't let Connor do this, then you know they're denying him a massive payday, even at least fifty million. I mean, I know he said he wants a hundred million, but you know, there it's, you would have to think that this is going to be a. a several million pay-per-view buy. I talked to somebody in uh, New York the other day, a high-up HBO executive, who told me he thought for sure it would surpass Mayweather-Pacquiao in pay-per-views, and that was $4.6 million. Uh, I'm not sure it does that much more. You know, I think it probably is in the $3 million range, but you're talking McGregor would be making, uh, you know, 50, 60, 75 million, and Mayweather even more than that. How do you deny him that? So that's where the UFC has the problem. If they deny him, he may not want to fight for them again, and there would be a big rift there. So, but then Dana White knows, hey, if Mayweather uh, beats him badly and it's a one-sided fight, you know, what do they have left with Conor McGregor? So I think that you know the UFC would prefer this have never come up, uh, but. I think they're going to go forward with it reluctantly because they have no no real choice with Connor because if they if they lose him uh, at the, at a time when they have heavy debt service on their sale. Uh, their monthly debt service is staggering. They need to have those kind of big events that are going to bring in that kind of money. And if they not only lose this fight with uh, Mayweather, but then they lose Connor because he just doesn't want to fight for them anymore. It, it's not a good situation for them. So I think that they're going to do the best they can to uh, try to work something out with him. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. You know, we talk about it on this podcast every single week, and I agree yep. with you that my gut tells me that the fight does not happen this year just because there's still too much to to get through. Um, however, it does make me wonder then, well, do we go the entire year without seeing McGregor fight at all in the UFC or in boxing? Because you almost got to think that if, if that fight is being negotiated and it seems like a real possibility, that McGregor probably would not fight in the UFC 
in the interim. You know, he would just sit it out and wait until this fight comes together. But I have a hard time believing that he would just, you know, come off of the year that he had in 2016 and then we will not see him at all in 2017. And I know just as fight fans, hopefully that doesn't happen. But we'll see how it uh, where it shakes out from here.